Hey, welcome back to the channel. Um, so this video was meant to come out about a month earlier, but a bunch of things happened. So, first of all, when I was like <laughs> mostly done editing the video, my software decided, hey, this video doesn't exist anymore. So every copy I had on my computer just wiped. So that sucked. Wasn't in my recycle bin or anything. I checked everywhere. Um, and then second of all, like when I was playing through the game, the entire second half of the game did not save when I played it, and I don't know why. It was just a lot of things happening. So I had to completely re-edit the entire thing, record like half the game again, and it was just a lot of work. But um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this video. It's been a lot of work, and it was actually a lot harder than I expected. Uh, but yeah, here it is. Can I beat Dark Souls 1? With pyromancies only. So, as every Dark Souls playthrough starts, we have to create a character. And this one I'm gonna call Hand of the Flame, because I couldn't say Hand of the Flame, there was it was too short. Anyways, I picked the class Pyromancer and I decided to go for the master key so that I can get to Blight Town early. And uh I decided to create a kind of swamp dweller type thing. Try to create like a Shrek green, but it was very hard to do that. So I just went with this. I like it. Anyways, these are the rules of the run. So all direct damage must come from pyromancy. So I can do summons, but I have my damage has to be from pyromancies. And I'm only required to fight all the main game bosses or progression bosses. So I don't have to do side bosses. Um, glitches are allowed, and that the reason I say only for the first boss is because well, I kind of have to. Okay, and. Uh, this general knowledge thing right here is that pyromancies don't scale off levels, which is cool. And I decided to drop the hand axe because why not? Grab my Estus and decide to fight a silent demon for the first time. Um, the thing is, we're already a little bit low on damage. Uh, yeah, first attempt did not go well. I actually ran out of pyromancies. Second attempt goes better, and I actually just to actually win this time. That one goes to Silent Demon. Now the real challenge starts and the first problem. So right here there's one of two things I can do. One, I can go for Laurentis of the Great Swamp which is locked in the depths. Or I can go for Quailana of Izalith which actually requires me to have a level 10 Pyromancy Flame. Which I can't get without Laurentius. But the thing about Laurentius is we don't actually do enough damage to kill Capra Demon, which means I can't get the basement key. So we do have to do a little bit of bending of the rules, but that's okay. You'll see here in a second. This is also where we use our first glitch. And this glitch is the Capra Demon AI break. What we do is we climb up the ladder and as soon as we get to the top, we tap the A key so that we're facing a different direction. Then we roll over this way and from here, we can just jump straight into Capra Demon's arena. But the dogs could still aggro on, so this is still a little bit annoying to do, as you can see here. Somehow, I ended up getting real lucky with the dogs AI right here. I ended up killing two birds with one stone, or in this case, two dogs with one fireball. And right about here was when I started thinking that maybe I didn't have enough firepower to actually kill him. And I'm using the max amount of fireballs I can. Like at this point, I only have eight. One to take out the dogs, and then the rest don't even kill Capra Demon. So I say, fuck it, and fire bombs are close enough to fire balls. I mean, they are technically still fire balls. So I finish Capra Demon off with an astounding four fire bombs. And yeah, there goes Capra Demon. And that's the only glitching we can use, and that's the only exception, okay? Now we're onto the depths. And all I want here is Laurentius, and after this, I'm done. So. I do some jumps and then I break the barrels and save Laurentius. Then I decide to farm some souls for a little bit so that I can save up for combustion, which is actually one of my favorite pyromancies in this run. And it actually does a good bit of damage and it's kind of melee based, which I enjoy. But I actually end up grinding more so that I can buy more fireballs, so now we have 16 casts. And now it's time for Taurus Demon. So, I take out the arches on top, and test our damage. And pretty good damage, if I'm being honest. This fight should be pretty easy. Really no struggle at all involved, if I would say. 
Um, but yeah, one very near death here and there. And we end up taking down Taurus Demon. Easy peasy. First try. Then I say hey to Solaire for his help later. And then I cross the Drake Bridge and then light the bonfire for later. I kill the boar in the undead settlement. And then I decide to run to Andre's bonfire. Just because it's the best place in the game. Other than Firelink. I kill the Tower Knight so that I can grab the Firekeeper Soul, and then I make my way down back to Firelink, grabbing the Homeward Bone on my way. I also decide to purchase Fire Orb, just as another spell, and it actually does a lot of damage. Afterwards, I killed the Mage protecting the Gargoyles, decide to save Lotric from his little tiny prison cell, and kick him down a little early just in case he becomes a problem later. And then I summon Solaire in preparation for the Gargoyles fight. Now it's time to fight the Gargoyles. So I actually thought that this was going to be a lot harder than it really was and Fire Orb actually does very very good damage against them. So I make very quick work against the first Gargoyle with, along with some of Solaire's help. And then the second Gargoyle is not a big problem and he goes down without much of a fight. GG Gargs, first try again. And with that also comes along with the first Bell of Awakening. Man, this challenge is going pretty fast. I really hope our damage drop off doesn't just go to shit in the very next boss fight. Like that would really suck. Then, using the souls I obtained from defeating the Gargoyles, I managed to somehow upgrade my Pyromancy Flame to an astounding plus 5, already halfway there to unlocking Quelana. Now it's time I head into Blight Town. So first I went to the bonfire and I almost managed to light it, but Manager Meldrin made her way into my server first. So what do I do? I try to fight her, but that damage is horrible. Like dude. 42 damage with a fire orb. So, instead, I just decided to run around Blight Town for a little bit, trying my best to get her to just die of fall damage or natural causes, but nothing actually ends up working. So, I save and quit. I manage to actually run as fast as I can and grab the bonfire before she gets in my world. And I do the same thing on the way back and manage to sit down. Then, I decide to fight her for her help against Quaylag because I know I'm going to need it. So, start the goofiness. So, after running out of Estus and down to my last two fireballs, I managed to take her down first try. Lucky me. So, I think her help will be useful against Quelag due to Quelag's fire resistance. Instead of just speaking about it, let's actually fight her. Okay, let's test the damage, and... You've gotta be kidding me. She's immune to fire! Okay, so now this fight is just a matter of... Can Mandator Mildred survive long enough to kill Quelag for me? Okay, so according to the Dark Souls fandom, Mandator Mildred has a plus 8 butcher knife and does 162 damage. And Quelag has 3,139 health. So it only takes around 20 hits for Mildred to kill Quelag, but Mildred also has zero poise, so every attack means something. So this fight is down to distracting Quelag and luck. So let's start the attempts. Okay, so first attempt, I try to sit close to Quelag, constantly throwing fireballs at her. But that doesn't really work because I get low on Pyromancies and. We actually ended up getting pretty close on the first attempt, so the strategy was working, but in the end it just wasn't enough, and Mildred ended up dying through the fire anyways. So I homeward bone out for my second attempt. Second attempt actually goes about the same, I do the same strategy because it worked out pretty well the first time, but no dice. Third attempt, I change it up a little, try to keep my distance while constantly throwing fireballs, and we actually managed to do it this time. Only three tries. And Mildred is the MVP of this one, because without her, this would literally be impossible. Anyways, GG Quaylag, third try. 
With that, we also bring the second Bell of Awakening, which means we can now head to Anor Londo if we really want to. But I have a few things I need to do first. So first, I decided to go to Quaylike's sister and join the Covenant so that I can get the Great Chaos Fireball Pyromancy. Then I decided to talk to Ingi, 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 Ingi. You know what? I'm just gonna call him Eggman. So I upgrade my Pyroflim to a plus seven, and then I turn to Cease's Discharge so I can get more souls and just for later. And then I grab his sister's clothing because that's how weird I am. I'm kind of kinky like that, and um. He's immune to fire, so I say fuck it, and I just punch him to death because, you know, what else am I gonna do? Yup, challenge run failed. Too bad, so sad. Guess this video was for nothing. But yeah, GG ceaseless. Then I upgrade to a plus eight, and then I decide to farm these guys for the rest of the souls required, and then I go for this item. What I meant to say was I went for this item. Oh, for fuck's sake. What I meant to say was get this item. There we go, because that's so hard. And then I decided to upgrade my Paraclam to the plus 10. And now we can unlock Quailana. And with her unlocked, we have a bunch of pyromancies that are super expensive. So I pop some souls, buy great combustion, and then I make my way to the power within pyromancy. Kill the parasite. And what this pyromancy does is it actually gives us a 40% increase to all damage. Then I make my way down to the Great Hollow so I can get the Clorinthy Ring. And I upgrade my attunement so that I can equip a new spell. And the Great Combustion with Power Within is a lot of damage. So we're going to be using that a lot. And with our newfound damage, I decide that it's time to challenge Stray Demon. So I proc Power Within and I get my new Pyromancies ready. And let's just see the damage on this baby. Okay, so not too much damage, but we can definitely do this. And little did I know, with enough determination and enough firepower, we actually ended up killing straight in first try. And I don't usually kill this boss first try often, so GG. This time around, I actually remembered to grab the Rusted Iron Ring because I will be going to Blight Town a lot this run. I go back to the swamp and then I buy Firestorm. And this spell was kind of a mistake, because it's super expensive, and it's super slow, and it has very little casts. So it's only good against big targets, so I don't actually use it a lot this run. Now it's time to head up into Sen's Fortress. On my way up, I make sure to grab the Ring of Steel Protection, and I also get this very, very lucky save and quit. Before the boss, I kill the giant. And now it's time for Iron Golem. So, I pop power within, and it's time. So, this fight might be an issue because my damage is good, but I don't know. Wait. Did I just stagger him with a single pyromancy? Uh, okay. Good to know. Pyromancies can do poise damage. Anyways, time for Iron Londo. So, I level up a bit, and then I run through the rafters. And then I struggle for a long time to kill this gargoyle, and end up using like 99% of my pyromancies. And then I somehow manage to get this guy to fall off, even without pyromancies. So, that's good. Then I meet up with Solaire, ask for his help, and now it's time for the dynamic duo, O and S. And that music is still so bone chilling, and oh my god, we are doing major damage. That is our best pyromancy though, so I'm not sure if it's gonna hold up with normal combustion. Uh, but yeah, Ornstein, very, very easy first phase. Um, Ornstein went down very fast, and I don't think I needed Solar this time around. 
and yeah, there was a little glitch here, but that's that that's cool, I guess. Anyways, Smo is a bit more defensive against Pyromancies. Well, just because he has more health. Uh, but one close call here, and the fight was over. Just like that. Easy fight. Oh yeah, and uh, it happened again. So, that, that's cool. And then it disappeared after that, I don't know why. Anyway, it's time to claim our Lord's Vessel. Definitely what I was going to say. Um, yeah. Sadly, we do have to kill Booba Lady, just because... I do want to fight Guinevere for some strange reason, uh, and I don't want to get the ring. But yeah, say goodbye to Booba Lady, and hello Dark and Orlando. Now it's time for Gwendolyn, and this fight is just for fun because I did not have to do side bosses. But yeah, this is just me torturing myself. Um, so Gwendolyn likes to teleport away when you get close, and most of my damage is close range. So, Pyromancy do take a long time to cast, and she also does a lot of damage, so I'm in for a good time. But, second attempt goes better, as he actually decides to not teleport as much, and I developed a Fireball Combustion Strat. And yeah, Gwendolyn goes down second try. Afterwards, I go back to Blight Town to upgrade my Pyroflame to a plus 13, and now it is time that I place the Lord's Vessel. After that, I went back to Anolondo to grab Havel's armor for the Four Kings. Okay, so before we get into the next part, I do want to say that I went through the entire second half of the game besides Gwyn, and then left, and then later I came back to it, and all of that was gone. So what you're seeing now is my second run through of the second half of the game. So it's a bit fast paced here, but. I still did everything, so shouldn't be too bad. But yeah, anyways, back to the video. I wanted to go after the Four Kings first, so I grabbed the key of the seal, and then I made my way down to the Four King, and then realized that I'm stupid and forgot to kill Sif. So, what we have to do now is we have to go back to Undead Parish, kill Andre because I'm broke as shit and can't buy the Curse of Pretorius. Sorry, Andre. Now, the only good part about this is his ragdoll body. It's really fun to mess around with. As you can see there. Now it's time for Sif. And the only problem with this fight is that my pyromancies are slow. So sometimes it can be a bit like scary to find attack openings. But in the end I do end up getting good attacks in. And doing a lot of damage to Sif without too much trouble. And Sif fought like a good girl as always. So yeah. GG Sif. First try. Then I leveled up Endurance a little bit, and now that we have the Ring of Artorias, we can finally run back to the Four Kings Arena. And this time, we jump in with the Ring equipped, and it's time for Four Kings. And Four Kings, I decided to do first because I knew they'd be the hardest, and you can see here that I do not do a lot of damage. And I do not have many Pyromancies, so this is going to be a very tough fight. This first King, I was struggling a little bit to dodge. But, uh, like, almost all of my combustions, or all of my great combustions and some of my normal combustions were used. And the first one's down. Second one was a bit easier to take down, but second or third one also spawned in while I was fighting him, which is not good news for the fourth king. So, midway through the third, the fourth king also spawns in, as you can see, like, right here. Uh, but yeah. Third king goes down, and now it's just the fourth king. And from here, I'm pretty confident in my ability. And yeah, fourth king goes down with a huge fight. And yeah, first try four kings. I was very impressed with myself here. GG. And after four kings, I decided to go after Nito because I thought he was going to be the next hardest boss. Okay, so next up is Pinwheel, and this is the easiest boss in the game, or at least to me it is. And just look at that damage. There was no way. This like this fight ended before it even started. But yeah, first try Pinwheel, as always. Pretty easy boss, and not the worst, but a Chaos is the worst, but still not really that good. 
You guys are wondering the mask I got, huh? And I'll actually show you. This was a good mask day. Anyways, after that, I upgrade so I can get another attunement slot. Then I actually jump into the pit to get the Skull Lantern. Grab this is so that I can trade it to Snuggly the Crow for the Ring of Fog. And this is just so I can get through some areas easier. I discovered it when I was learning Hitless strats. Anyways, it is time for Nito. And the strategy I have for him is just go in and try to do this. So the damage isn't bad, but it's not good. It's just bearable. And I think I'll be able to do this fight. Like, the damage is fine. Um, the only real issue is the skeletons, which actually caused a few of my close calls, like you can see here. I got trapped between them, and I just couldn't dodge. But yeah, in the end, I ended up managing to do it first try, and ended up using all my Estus and most of my Pyromancies. But still, Nito put up a good fight this time. GG. Afterward, I go back to Sens to pick up the Slumbering Dragon Crest ring. And the reason for that ring and the fog ring is so I can get through the archives a lot easier than before. And I actually end up killing this guy and getting the Fang Borhelm, which is pretty cool. I say hey to the crystal guy here, and if anyone actually knows his like, lore, please tell me in the comments because I'm pretty interested. I have no idea why he's here. But yeah, he was easy to kill, and then our first encounter with Seath went just as well as it always does. And that means, um, well, you could see for yourself. And if you remember the sorcery only run, or if you watched that, sorceries couldn't actually penetrate these walls and get the key for us. Let's hope pyromancies are different. Hey, nice. So we actually managed to get out of the jail cell, and the run is still going. We go up to the top, and we actually die to this guy, which is something that hasn't happened in a long heckin' time. But second time I go up, I turn off the music, make my way to the key, and then light the bonfire in the archives. Then I run through the crystal caverns, and I proc power within before running as fast as I can to the arena. And when you do this, the clam guys actually can't get in for some reason, I don't know why. But yeah, it's time to challenge Seath. So, first thing I do is run back and destroy his crystal, like you always should. And Seath actually isn't hard at all in this run. Well, he's not hard normally, but in the sorcery run, he was resistant. In this run, you can clearly see that he's very easy with pyromancies. And aside from one hit, I end up killing him first try, and he was a very easy boss. So, I guess GG Seath, not really a fight, but you know. Still counts as a boss for some reason, but yeah, only two more Lord Souls. Then for a brief moment, I forgot my game didn't save the progress, so I actually had to fight Demon Fire Sage. And this fight I was kind of scared for because he has fire in his name, but for someone with fire in their name, they're not very resistant to fire. So yeah, fight was not hard at all, just a reskin of Asylum Demon. Easy fight. <clears throat> And somehow, that hit him. I don't know how, pyromancies are OP, end of story. Then I decided to fight Centipede Demon just because, I mean, I'm already here, so why not? Let's continue the streak of killing fire bosses. And, um, I didn't realize it before, but shortly after entering the, the arena, I realized that he is completely immune to fire. So, you can not summon Soul there for this fight, but I just didn't find it worth it. Afterwards, I give Quail access to the 30 humanities required to unlock the Lost Isolate shortcut, and so I can obtain the Chaos Storm Pyromancy. Through the shortcut, I kill the Sunlit Maggot for Daddy Zoller, and now it's time for everybody's favorite boss. And yes, there's another montage here, because yet again, I struggled a lot.
with the final Lord Souls down, we can finally make our way to the end of the game. The Lord of Cider himself. So, now that we're actually here, there's not much to say about this fight. Other than the one and only fact that he kicked my ass. So, a few of the main challenges of this fight are he two shots me. I don't do too much damage to him. And the openings for attacking are very little. So great combustion and combustion are my best bets. Now, when I run out of these spells, which I will, <clears throat> there's not much to do after that. I just have to hope I'm far enough, and I hope I can bait an attack that I'm able to either get out of the way fast enough, or just that he misses. That's really all it's up to. So it's a bit of luck, and a bit of just running around. But I didn't do that that much, so I ended up dying a lot more than I should have. But yeah, I'm just going to show the final attempt right now. That's it. With Gwyn defeated, the run's finally over, and I actually decided to go for the darkness ending because, you know, using Primacy's only kind of teaches you that fire isn't that good. I'm kidding, it was really good, but it points the challenge really showed, and it was kind of hard to do some things. Like, Koilag was tough, Gwyn was tough, and some bosses were just impossible to get by. But yeah, with that, that's the end of the challenge, and... That's the answer. You can technically beat Dark Souls with Pyromancies only, besides for Ceaseless, because, yeah, he's. Yeah, he should have discharged himself, anyways. Uh, but yeah, I'm looking forward to what ideas you guys want to see next. And next video will probably be a DS3 challenge run, which I have not done on the channel yet. So if you guys have any ideas for that, please leave it in the comments. Um, and if you guys just, like, enjoyed the video, you know. Feel free to leave a like, maybe subscribe, you know. Took me a while to get this out because of all the errors I described in the beginning. Um, but yeah, this video was a tough one to make. Um, not much else to say, but I appreciate you guys watching and I hope you enjoyed. Also, one last thing, we are super, super close to a thousand subscribers and that has been a long goal of mine. Um, so some would really be appreciated. And also... I almost forgot to say a happy Mother's Day to you all. Um, go tell all your moms that you love them. And yeah. Have a good weekend, everyone.